Uh, my name's Stephen Suter. I'm a project engineer with Network Rail. I, over my Network Rail career, I have had the good fortune to be involved with uh, the structure, which is the, the Tay Bridge, which spans the River Tay from Fife to Dundee. Uh, the location we are currently at is the south side at Wormit. The Tay Bridge is, is part of the East Coast Mainline North and it's still a primary route and will continue to be a primary route for, for access from the south to, to, to the, the north of Scotland. This bridge is the, the more recent one of two bridges. The first bridge, as you can see from uh, the, the, the stumps of the old foundations in the river, was built in order to open up the north of Scotland to the North British Railways in the late 1800s. Unfortunately, the, the first bridge, uh, which was designed by Sir Thomas Bouch, was actually too slender a bridge. Uh, it didn't take full account of uh, the environment and there was an element of poor quality construction which resulted in the bridge falling down during a violent storm during December of 1879, uh, which was unfortunate because everyone on the train that went down uh, as the high spans collapsed, lost their lives. However, not to be daunted by this, uh, uh, the decision was almost immediately taken to rebuild a newer bridge, uh, a stronger one, more robust, and as a consequence we now have what we're looking at here, the, the Tay Bridge. This bridge it was designed to almost five times the environmental loading that is to what the original bridge was built. As a consequence, it's, it's over twice the, the width and extremely more, more robust. So you can see that there was lessons learned and carried forward uh, into this bridge. It was actually William Arrow was the constructor. Now, William Arrow is also the person who built the, the fourth bridge uh, which, as we are all aware of, is Network Rail's pride and joy here in Scotland. However, this Tay Bridge was built prior to this, and some of the construction methods which were pioneered here have been adopted on the fourth bridge as well. The bridge is 85 spans long. It's over two miles in length. Prior to the bridge being built in the late 1800s, the, the river was crossed by trains, but the, the trains then had to go on a ferry and the, the whole uh, mechanism for, for getting the trains across was slow and expensive. Uh, the, the alternative means of access from the Fife into Dundee would have been a, a round journey of circa 60 to 65 miles, which way back in the 1880s, 1890s, would have involved a lengthy half day, if not to, to a full day journey. Given the great vision of the civil engineers of the day, the likes of your William Arrows, uh, who built it, your Barlows, who designed it, your Bouches, who by, by their errors uh, kind of showed the, the way forward. They, these were the guys with, with vision and passion to, to, to open up regions of the country which were previously only accessed with the utmost of hardship to, to others. And then opening this up, not only did we open up uh, the north of Scotland to tourism, but we, we created avenues, shall, shall we say, whereby the resources of Scotland could, could be opened up. We were talking about the whisky, we were talking about the fisheries, we were talking about investment for, from uh, you, you know, visionaries to make Scotland more accessible and, and in doing so that this railway line and, and the engineers of this railway line were not alone. They had competition from others who had similar visions who were approaching it from different angles and uh, as a result it did, it became a competition, it became a pride, it came to the engineer who wanted his to, to, to be the best. These were, were brave people who, who, who went out in the harshest of environments and you know, they, they poked about, they kicked about, they, they, they tried, they made errors, they came back and they'd done it again. Until the point when they were approximately 130 years later, this, this structure built by these people still stand as, as a proud testament to, to what these guys foresaw. Although, although the politicians bought into it, 
it, it was the, the passion and vision of, of the civil engineers with We Can Do, We Will Do, which created this and, and continues to, to keep this as a viable, uh, ongoing prospect as it is today. But what, what does the future hold for, for civil engineering? At the moment we have a bridge here. Previous to that it, it, it was a ferry. Uh, civil engineers have always been there, have, have always taken a lead on, on the, the likes of these things. So th I, I'm putting it to you, do you have a vision in 30 years time to say what's going to be here, what's it going to look like, are we actually even going to, is it going to be visible? Over to you.